Hey all you happy lost souls, um, sorry about the last two videos uh, uploaded, they kind of um, were just a little uh, messed up, I gotta re-upload them, uh, problems with the, the program, um, or my network, it's hard to tell, <laughs> it's just crazy minerals. Obviously I'm here because uh, the artifact collection and I talk about the penny pack, but this crazy new bank I found using the the ghost trees, the big birch trees, because they're being used, obviously, as markers for crossing points and also um, for these places where there's quarries. Um, Willow Grove, the area where this particular um, deposit is, uh, used to be called Hot Springs or Mineral Springs. Uh, the penny peg is so rich because... Uh, it, it flows on this, this fault line through Huntington Valley. Um, and, and this is at a trinity in the stream where it splits into three directions. And there's a mill cut too. And when they cut that, a lot of stuff was dug up too. Um, and there's so much silver back there, uh, mercury. And then there's tons of metals and minerals that, that only um, are found in a few places. And it's when these... Uh, elements from the mantle are pushed to the surface. It, think of it as a fountain of stone. That deposit actually became noticeable to me. I drive by it every day of my life, like four times to and from work. And from running around, it's four minutes from my house. It's not even on, um, it's just on like public land. Uh, but there used to be an old house that was knocked down in front of it. And, and there's still the old remnants of the mill across the street. But this deposit is massive. And it's the source. I call it a beach of hammers. I picked up about 60 hammers walking 25 feet into the deposit. They're just piled. But then there's these like beautiful pieces that were left as like offerings. You see this, this beautiful uh, mesomorphic um, rock. It, it's almost soft, but it's flexible. Um, and it also... Uh, Got all this um, little tiny fleck, flakes of quartz and other crystals, um, like elements of uh, vanadium. Uh, and you only see minerals like this, like in Iceland, this like purplish mineral right here, and uh, this paleogorskite type clay. Um, but you could see all these different minerals and metals in there. This is not my uh, my best camera, so I apologize. But start seeing all the crystal structures and the cubes and the little pieces of silver and the other minerals popping out, a little gold running through there, and the weight. Um, this is all stuff from that quarry uh, site that you know I recently put the video up about. Um, and like, you gotta like have a really good eye because like this to a lot of people just look like asphalt stone or cinder, but this is a, another mineral. Um, and this stuff is pouring out down there. There's literally, literally two pieces of metal right here, here and here. Um, I'm not gonna like rip through my drawers from like all the little natives you know silver ore nuggets i found but i'm not someone who's, who sells like anything so uh i'm not like a gold miner prospector or silver but i do know it's not hard to identify there's everything there there's this stuff pouring out there's something called alabaster okay <laughs> alabaster is pretty much like compressed drywall it's gypsum it's high grade gypsum that gathers and gets compressed into this semi-precious material the egyptians use this because it's so it's beautiful it can be polished but it can be cut and shaped very easily um, but this is extremely heavy and i'm getting uh weird magnetic readings now the thing with metals like palladium, palladium uh, platinum there's a lot of platinum and there's, there's just tons of well, I thought in an earlier video, I said, hey, that mag, you know, magnetite hammer that was left as an offering, there is a ton of magnetite pouring out of the ground back here too. All of this stuff, including this crazy material here, this massive hammer. 
and I, I, I got to pull some of the other hammers out that are cleaning, but this is an absolutely epic hammer. This is also what we call like a tamper where it would be tamped to crush. Um, but you see this staining from the strap. And I'm going to put this um, this over here, actually. So we can look at this triangular hammer here. And we'll get a good look. But from the back to the front, you see this band. And then let's turn it. And you see the angle of the artifact here. And then you see the line coming up and then it keeps going it keeps going. Now what's actually being stained and actually melted because it's so soft is the silver is actually being pressed together. And you're seeing that silver that's running through this because it's soft. But we're going to file that band around as it wraps and keeps going and it comes down. And now we got a couple cross sections, but you notice here this notch and you'll see this on all of this specific um, groups hammers. You'll see a notch here, and you see this in a lot of artifactual hammers. You see this concave here for where that is going to grab it. You can actually see an eye. So this is a giant bird head FUG um, hammer or some kind of lizard head or something. You can see it, and then its nose is going to be coming down. Um, this stuff's all reminiscent of... Uh, um, the Meso, uh, lithic or I mean, you know, Mesoamerican, uh, and you can really just see the metals from where the stuff was pressed in here. And this has only been cleaned once. I don't, I didn't want to remove the staining and you can really start seeing all the leaching from the use. Um, and we can really start seeing there's a nose and an eye. Uh, that's pretty crazy. I just noticed that, but, um, Look at that notching. It's double notched. You got a notch here, 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 here. That is sophisticated. Look at that. It's a triangle. Look at that. Look at that notching. That is ridiculous. Turn this around here. We'll see some of the other ingenuity. Now, you notice, look at this right here. You can really see. That this is all done on intention. This side here, every side could be used to strike on this. And then you have this little notch right here. You can really see it carved right here where it shallows off. That's going to grab that band. My, my hand catches it. You see right there? It's give you that other tie down. And then on the back end, that's where you're going to tie down. There's your tie down notch. So... Um, it's really awesome because you can follow all of the banning. But this is not granite. I mean, you could call it that. It's an amalgamation, but it's not quartz. This is metal. It's not just metal. It's some advanced alloy. Um, but I don't think this is manufactured. I think this was a unique material to this area. And all the other hammers that look like this are being washed out of this quarry site and this quarry site is split by the baseball field a lot of my artifacts such as these over here like the magnetite hammer and uh, the knife that is also made out of some crazy unique serpentine and uh, this object here now these tools after careful examination and the materials are made out of are conducive to what we would call a stone cutting tool um, think of a stone cutting wheel being some advanced ceramic uh, embedded with diamonds, titanium flakes, and things like that. Um, now this beach of hammers, as I call it, because remember guys, I was there for about 45 minutes total on this like first exploratory run of, of the place. And um, I, did a, <laughs> I did an initial walkthrough. Here's another, another hammer right here. I'm just going to pull it out of the, uh, the bath here. Look at this. Look at that, guys. Look at the mineralization in that. Look at the metals pouring out of that. All these black areas and spots and different colors. These are all different types of metals. And um, these little brown... Uh, uh, I forget. They're parts of the uh, 
three elements that make up vandium. There's a lot of chromium in here. Um, there's palladium in here. Um, this is just from a quick glance with a high powered like magnifying glass. I can make out some of the crystal structures. A ton of this like, um, oh God, what is it? It's only found around here in Michigan and one other place. Um, oh God, what is it? Uh, Canfieldite. Uh, a lot of this is like, would be considered rare Canfieldites, but I would call this an advanced ceramic with alloys embedded in it. While this meso, uh, highly pliable, like meso, semi mesomorphic, like filler rock in between, um, it may not even be that. This could just, you know, be the oxidization of all these little metals pressed together. But these are cold to the touch. Look at this hammer, guys. Look at the flat end here, how it was shaped down right here. There's that striking end. There's this sloped off back end here. So you got almost that. And this one here has a pointed end too. So you've got this sharp spaded end and then a flat end on the back. You've got like an ax where, you know, this could be used for chopping trees down for uh, this way. Um, you, this is a little bit harder to see the the bands right here. So this this black banding that's running around. So we call that artifact patina. But you can see where it's cut into right here. And we definitely got this can't feel I feel about this. But this thing is heavy. These are heavy bearing load stones, if you want to call them that. But even this is an animal. So we have what looks like a rabbit, but is also a hammer. It could be a different animal, but you get my my theme, my idea here. And, and you can see the pounding on the end of this hammer. And you could see the metals being mashed in more and more on the ends. And you don't get a fracturing with it. You almost get a hammering effect, a divoting effect. My question is, I have no idea how they actually made these. These hammers, this material is, it would be like cutting through diamonds. I mean, that's what it's likened to. I mean, except for the soft stuff in between. I, the only way you could really, uh, I, I guess, I mean, the only way you could really do something like that is by, by long filing and, and sanding with it with a harder or, or more rough with sand. I guess you can use abrasive sanding. Another crazy hammerhead. This has the classic um, notching right here in the back. Triangular again, just like the other one. Um, it's crazy because it's like pyramidic almost. It's a crazy tool. They, they Look at that. I mean... <laughs> It, it's the same as the other one, and then it's it's sloped in right here. So you got an easy... <laughs> now, this could, uh, this could have been more of a war club than a hammer, because there's a lot of... Uh, this side's that crazy mineralization through it. almost looks like rubitite. It's like the, that red orthotorotite or something. I think it's like discovered in Finland. Um, but look at that. That's that same maker. I mean, the same idea where that's where your tie down is there and there. I mean, it's quite, quite clear. See, <laughs> um, but this, uh, this site, I've never seen anything like it. And, um, it's a treasure, uh, most definitely a treasure. I mean, look at this piece. This is extremely extremely tough stone this is another stone loaded with with metals uh, this has uh, man i gotta get this stuff tested it's oxidizing so it's like silvers in it but you can see where it was like worked down and it's almost like a, a melted surface there's a cutting edge though here and this is swervy and it fits your hand well it fits the right hand well. So this is made for someone right-handed. This is like a handheld chopping tool. Um, again, for for woodworking mainly or for, for butchering. Uh, but 
it's um this is an amazing amazing sight uh i'm going back there again um i'm going to bring a pan with me just to to not to to prospect for for value for money or anything just to get an idea of what sediment is back there to see what minerals we can maybe identify um this is like unpolished infinity stone uh, as a gem it has a lot of value it's everywhere back there i confused it with agate for uh, a while um like i said i'm i'm very good at the geology stuff as far as earth movements plates stuff like that but actual minerals that is a field gemology it's not uh that Guys, I don't know, but um, the silver mines are here. The Susquehannocks were utilizing them, but more and more it's looking like this uh, culture is directly related to Gahota um, and furthermore influenced heavily by Mayans. Um, as far as the pottery, the site contains really, really nice old Susquehannock stone pottery here. Um, and we're... No slip either side, uh, clear with that hematite rust color. Um, and this is very similar. Uh, you can still see a fingerprint in there. It's like very similar to um, the stuff found down in uh, you know Tennessee, Mississippi Valley area, the Adena culture, the mound builders, um, and uh, yeah. So. Yeah, here's another piece. It's the base. Come around, but uh, anyway, we didn't have a lot of time. Weather keeps getting in the way. I mean, it's just beautiful. And these two beautiful pieces here were left left as offerings. Um, again, uh, this place would have been sacred in many ways to a lot of people. And when I tell you that. I'm telling you all the way up to modern times because before I left, sad to say, find something like this. A stone cutting wheel went right through this. Now, maybe somebody would be like, oh, the ancient alien theory. No, no, no. no I'm not, not buying that. There's a lot of roads nearby. But what I do think happened is it's extremely heavy. This is tons of silver in it. Oh, my God. I <laughs> put it down. I think probably weighs about 35, 40 pounds. But you see this, there's something carved on it. And I want to put like clay or something in it to figure out what it is. I think it's a bird or something. But if this was cut through, is what I'm thinking, it was probably, the saw never went all the way through. So it was sitting and, and the saw inadvertently went through it and stopped. It wasn't intending to go through this. Um, this could be, some kind of old headstone or some kind of old marker for the site. Um, but it's probably native. There's some kind of effigy hammered out in there. And I can't make it out. But this thing is heavy. And it's clearly... Um, an old, like, hand-hewed perfect brick, but then it got inadvertently cut through. I'm imagining uh, it could have been part of the house. There's a couple colonial homes back there, and then it got, you know, accidentally cut when they were cutting a piece of the road or something like that and just washed its way down there. But um, I just love the Whew. heavy... <laughs> It's all heavy. It's heavy mentally. It's heavy physically. And there's these metals everywhere. I have some pure native um, nuggets that I'll, I'll show you um, in the next video because they're buried somewhere. And then this is a really strange metal. I can't figure out what it is. Um, it's pretty heavy. I thought it was lead. It's got chromate um, in it nodule here. That little black, black stuff. It feels like silver, possibly, but it's too hard. Um, but I'm thinking maybe some form of of platinum. But you get, but you're getting this not super shiny shine to it. It's like more of a duller metal. 
Now, a lot of these, like this, this big hammer I showed you a second ago, um, a lot of this stuff is coming, uh, it's registering on with my little app as uh, like a paramagnetic field, which makes sense when there's like multiple metals with opposing like magnetic forces within a material. Um, you know, there's way more scientific people out there than me that can explain that more in depth to you. This is one of the best hammers I, I, like I found at Quick Glance. Same deal though. This is just getting out of the uh, the wash. Look at that 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 perfect that notch there for where it's gonna sit down on its on its handle, and then up top here you even got like these two pressure points, and obviously the hammer is going this way. So this thing wrapped around it like that that was holding it. So you pretty much could notch out a branch and slide that in, and then you have a tie down again right back here it could have also like slotted in like a tongue and groove um i have to think a little bit more on that about how this one is exactly attached but the actual piece of material is freaking gorgeous and it's got so much going on in it i think i called it like peacock or earlier this is not what this really is um this is pretty much likened to vanadium in its in its construction and if we look back far enough that's not really stone tool that's some kind of ancient metal tool and that's what it looks like all worn out and i wonder because there are these odd like materials holding a lot of these things together these these clays um these these uh mesomorphic these pliable substrates um i'm wondering if they weren't exactly creating some kind of crazy uh ceramic like we're mixing uh stuff together then firing it but it would be impossible there's just too many geology in it but that's what the earth did it mixed all the crap together fired it and this stuff exposed itself and it was like the craziest most advanced material that and boom I don't know how they cut it. They cut it because there was so much of the other material to cut it. Now, one of these might be a little different than the other in, in compound, and they all are. Some of them may have bits of titanium in them. They might cut through anything. Some of them may have magnetite, which they do. Um, these little flecks are all different things, and you got to get a high-powered magnifying glass, but microscope better. And you got to actually say to yourself, what shape is that? And look it up and, and, you know, that's how you can identify things. But there's some more of this Mayan pottery. Here's another piece with some art left on it. And then the Mayan blue piece. Uh, this Susquehanna people and then the earlier proto-Susquehanna people that were, like, probably us utilizing these quarries to get to the weird metals. Um, there's a ton of uh, cinnabar and mercury back there, which was as we all know, a thing that Native Americans and all cultures loved uh, to utilize in the quarry and the mine uh, because of red. It, it, it creates the most beautiful red pigment, and that's what we see in a lot of the stuff, including the hunks of silver and, you know, silver mercury type um, ores we find. Um, but, which, uh, are being washed right now so i got them all in the wash oh here's um some of the silver mercury or uh you see that that mercury that red running in it but these pieces were were left like these were quarried out this one's got a lot of silver it's heavy um and we see those copper lights and like the reds It's just, uh, whew. I just can't, uh, it's like, why did I, uh, I find all of it just because I look, but because I'm interested in it. Um, but this, uh, this needs to be researched by somebody that has, by many people that can collaborate and share ideas and get to the bottom of all the different layers of history back there. Because we now know why all these people are coming here. It's got crazy unique stone had great hunting great fishing um metals and there's a lot of um conflict archaeology uh, going on too so um 
And uh, I just, um, I'm at a loss right now. I got to process it all. But um, stay tuned, guys. I love you all. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. Um, if you know anyone that's interested, please suggest the channel. Share it, like it, hate it, love it. I don't know, but love your friends. Um, love your enemies more. Uh, and stay happy and stay lost. Um, yeah, uh, trust me, there'll be updates. Um, but this is kind of like uh, it. This is the source, guys. There's no other way to, to describe it. And um, the crazy thing is, using Google Earth, I found one more deposit that looks just like this. But it's the one that I've never been able to get to. It's impossible. It's in the middle of that dark, dark swamp that almost took my life when I stepped in some quicksand. And God, I had buddies with me. I'm always into the buddy system. I don't go wandering off in the woods alone. Um, you know, on a you know, on a day trail maybe, but I always tell people where I'm going. Um, this is like a, a lot of these are just preformed, preformed trays. Um, you got these thinner, more Solutrean like shapes coming out of the same quarry sites. Different type of people. Um, but maybe they weren't. I don't know. Um, stay tuned, guys. Uh, got to seek some professional help in a multitude of areas and ways. <laughs> Take care, y'all.